In this video, I'll be showing how we can add some spikes to our game. And when we touch these spikes, we respawn. To add some spikes into the game that are dangerous for the player, we're going to add a new tile map. So on our level node here, we'll add a child node for a new tile map. And I will rename this to tile map spikes. So this is going to be a separate tile map. So we're adding our spikes on a different tile map to our normal tile map because we want to be able to add some code that lets us damage the player when they specifically touch the spikes and not just the regular floor. So let's get the image for our spikes set up first. So if we have the tile map spikes selected, we can go to the inspector and choose the tile set and do new tile set. Then along the bottom, we want to click on tile set and we want to drag our tiles in here. So I'm going to go into my assets folder I'm going to go into the pixel adventure. I'm going to go and look for traps. And in traps, I will find spikes. And this idle one, I will drag in here. Click yes. And now down here, we have our simple spikes added in. Now, like with the previous tile map, we have to make sure tile map spikes is selected here. We need to add a physics layer. So we're going to click on the tile set, go to physics layers and add element. That adds our physics. So now what we can do is come back to the tile set and make sure we go on to paint, then select a property for physics layer zero. And what we want to do is we want to add the collision for this. So if we click on it to select it, now we don't want this whole shape to be selected. We want it just to be around the spikes. So we can actually drag these points down here to make it more accurate around the spikes. Now this would, this would be good enough, I think, but we can actually add extra points if we like. So if we go here and uh, you'll see there's a little green plus icon. If I click that, that'll add a new point in and I could drag it down so that we actually get our collision shape to go a bit more specifically around the dangerous points. Now, once you've actually edited the shape around it, don't forget to click back on here and you can see the blue area for our collider now just goes around the shape of the spikes themselves. With that done, we can swap over to the tile map down here. And if we select it, we can start painting some spikes into our level. So I will add a couple of spikes in to make this a bit more interesting. Okay, so there are some spikes drawn in there. So let's run the game. Now we can collide with them, so we can stand on them, um, but we don't get damaged by them just yet because we haven't added the code for it. But the collider is working, so let's get the code sorted. So if we start by going back over to our script for our player, so selecting script up here and making sure player is selected, I'm going to start by adding a variable called took damage, and we'll set that equal to false. So here we're tracking whether or not the player has taken damage. Now down in my function for the physics process, just below my if not is on floor line of code is where I'm going to add the code in. Now I'm going to paste it in and then I will talk about it. So highlighted here, this is the code I've just added, which is going to let us check if the player has been touched by the spikes and should die. So to put it as simply as I can, in every frame, there are a set amount of collisions that happen. So we can use this get slide collision count to get a number for how many collisions have happened in the frame. Then we can assign each collision to this collision variable. And as we're looping through all of them, we can then check that if that collision has the name of tile map spikes, which is the name of our tile map spikes node over here, then what we're going to do is check that if we have taken damage yet. So if we haven't taken damage, then we will say, okay, we have now taken damage and we'll respawn the player. Now, don't worry about understanding this fully. All you really need to know is that we can nice and easily check what we've collided with by checking for the name of the collision within this collision checking loop. And as long as the player hasn't taken any damage, we'll say they have taken damage and that they should respawn. So let's run that to check it out. At the moment, if I go back on the spike, I don't take damage anymore. And that is because we set taking damage to true here, but we never reset it to false. So we need to update our respawn function so that we can reset the took damage variable to be false. And we're essentially going to set up some invincibility frames for ourselves here as well, because at the moment we're actually respawning too quickly. And later on down the line, it will be a bit problematic if we're respawning instantly. So we're going to set a little delay here and give ourselves some invincibility frames. But for a simple start, let's just say took damage equals false and run the game. And there we go. Now I can continue to take damage. However, as I said, this is actually still running too quickly and I want to slow the respawning process down a bit so that it's cleaner later on. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's start by adding a simple timer in. So I'm going to create a 0.5 second timer before we respawn. So let's run that. Now let's run this and check out what happens. 
So when we hit the spike trap, there's a wee half second delay and we respawn. You can also see we're doing a bit of a jump because it's a bit glitchy because we're actually doing multiple collisions here because our player is just stuck on the spikes for a few frames there. So let's make this a bit cleaner. Let's start by hiding the player when they are respawning. So let's say self.visible will equal false. And then after our timer, let's say that self.visible is equal to true again once the player has respawned. So they hide and then they reappear. But this is still looking a little bit glitchy, so we've got some more work to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add another half a second timer down here and took damage will happen after everything else. So there's going to be an additional half a second until we reset took damage to be false. And now let's run this. Now we've lost that glitching. So we're nice and clean. There's a little delay until took damage is true again. So we can't take damage before we've reset the player, which stopped the glitching from happening that was happening before. One final thing to fix is we can actually still move around while we're dead. So if I jump up here, and notice how if I land on the spikes from the top and keep moving, you can still see my player moving, even though they're invisible, or at least you can still see the camera moving. So we're also going to stop that from happening. Now to do this, we're going to go back up to the top of our script and create a variable called can move, and we'll set that equal to true. So the idea here is we're going to track whether or not the player is allowed to move. Now they can move by default, but what we're going to say is when we're respawning, we're not allowed to move. So can move will equal false. And then after the respawn delay, we will say that can move equals true. Now this won't do anything just yet because we need to go down to our movement. So this at the bottom of the physics process function is where our movement actually happens. So if we say if can move equals false, we will just return. So if we can't move, we're not going to do anything else, then we can move. So I'll press tab after selecting all that. And that way we're now saying that, well, when we can't move, don't move, but otherwise we can move. So it's okay. So let's test that now. And there we go. I can't move while I'm respawning. And the respawn is nice and clean with a good delay.